personally, uh, I uh, was raised in a home where uh, it was not a Christian home. My mother and father didn't go to church, and so we children, we had uh, six of us all together, six children, and we didn't go to church except occasionally we would go to a vacation Bible school and sometimes walk down to the Methodist church to go to a Sunday school class. That was about it. And I think the last time when I, I went to church was when I was about 11 years old and didn't go back again until I was 17. And at that particular time, uh, a lady, a young girl on the school bus, she had gotten saved during her summer revival and just really on fire for the Lord and invited everybody to church. And she did me that way every day, every week. For nine months, she got on the school bus, and every week for nine months, she invited me to church. Usually more than once a week, uh, Wednesday night, Sunday, Sunday, uh, Sunday services. And, uh, you know, I, I was rude to her, and ugly to her, and lied to her, and, and did everything I could to make her leave me alone, and, and uh, not bother me anymore. Not to mention, you know, I just didn't go for nine solid months with every invitation. Until finally, after nine months, at the end of the school year, they were having a, a fellowship, which for the youth, it wasn't a, in the church, it was in somebody's home. And they were just going to be cooking out and having, uh, you know, hot dogs and hamburgers and chips and all, and food and fellowship. And there was going to be some, some people, uh, did some music and singing. And mostly just people, some of the people I knew from school that would be there. And... Uh, no preacher, no preaching, so they invited me, and I said, well, I'll go. If you'll just leave me alone, I'll go. Don't bother me anymore, don't ask me anymore. I'll go to this youth meeting. If I get my friend to go with me, my best friend, which also had, did not go to church anywhere, and so we, he decided he'd go with me. I enticed him by the girls. I said, there'll be some pretty girls there. <laughs> you know, he, he was looking for a girlfriend. And uh, I had a girlfriend, so I went for the hot dogs and hamburgers. <laughs> anyway, we went. And in that meeting, uh, they sang, and they sang about Jesus. And there's some things I experienced there that got my attention. First of all, there was peace there. Yeah, I didn't have much peace at home. My father was an alcoholic, and like I said, we weren't Christians, so there was a lot of arguing, fighting, fussing, carrying on, no peace. But there was peace there. I liked that. There was joy. You know, they enjoyed themselves, had a good time singing, music, and praising the Lord. And I enjoyed that. And then the thing most of all, I saw that there was a genuine love. People would hug your neck and you didn't even know. And they tell you they love you and invite you to church. And so after that, it's just like a, the Lord planted a seed in my heart. They didn't give me an opportunity to get saved in that meeting, but in one of the songs, the Lord dealt with my heart, and I knew I needed to be saved. So I started the church after that. She didn't have to invite me anymore. I went to church after that every Sunday morning. And then after they invited an evangelist there to preach a revival, and I got saved on August, Friday the 13th, 1971. And thank God for that. It changed my life forever and never be the same again. Instantly delivered me from a lifelong habit of cussing. <laughs> And uh, thank God it did so much more for me. And uh, that's how I got saved. Invite, somebody invited me and never giving up. So I encourage you to do the same thing. Invite people and don't ever give up. And witness to them and don't ever give up. And pray for them and don't ever give up. Amen. And just keep on keeping on. Amen.